So I've had my hands on the MSI Claw for a few weeks now as they were kind enough to loan it to me and I thought I would do a video about my experience with it before I have to send it back. This is my first time with a PC handheld. I'm not counting the time that I bought a competitor's model and it was a dud and physically burnt my hand. So I guess you could say I'm new to the world of PC handhelds. But what a way to kick off my experience with them than with the MSI Claw and I can honestly say that this thing has been awesome. So what is the MSI Claw? It's MSI's Windows handheld that basically allows you to game on the go in a handheld kind of way. This is essentially a fully fledged PC in a handheld format. This specific model that I have here is the MSI Claw A with the Intel Ultra 7 155H processor. Most of us are new to the world of the Intel Core Ultra chips as they're pretty new, but from what I gather, they have a really big focus now on AI and that's due to their included MPUs. It's got a seven inch full HD 120 Hertz touch screen display, two thumbsticks, a D-pad and A, B, X, Y buttons, as well as a left and right bumper, a left and right trigger, and two back macro buttons. There's also four buttons around the edges of the screen, which is the menu button, the quick settings button, the view button, and the MSI button. The design is pretty reminiscent to other PC handhelds out there, but it's actually very comfortable. And that's because of the little handles on the back of the device. It holds really comfortably in my hands and feels really good. Remembering, of course, I can't compare it to anything else except for that faulty white one that I had. It's in my opinion, lightweight and the weight is well distributed. The vents for cooling are on top of the device. And I find that the heat dissipates really well and it doesn't get too hot in my hand to the point where it burns. I'll get to battery life soon, but playing from 100% all the way down to 0%, I had absolutely no issues with abnormal heating. I was actually really surprised here because with constant use, the cooling worked pretty well and it didn't overheat and I expected it to. It's quite a solid build and I really like it. It's all black with RGB rings around the thumbsticks, but you can turn them off to give it a solid black look. And of course, save battery, which I like best. Now I mentioned that this is a PC in a handheld form factor. And that's true because it runs Windows. Windows 11 is the operating system on here, which means you can absolutely use it as a full computer. It has a one terabyte SSD and a Thunderbolt 4 input, so you can connect a hub and hook it up to monitors keyboards and mice. This isn't something that I personally do as its sole purpose for me is to use it as a handheld gaming console. Basically so I can just play all my indie games on because that's pretty much all I play these days. And I personally don't think that having a computer this small and a screen this small would be a fun experience. That's just me though. But with ample amount of storage and no doubt the ability to upgrade the SSD yourself, this is an epic way to play your games. So for me, the only reason why I want a PC handheld is so I can have an easier way to game. I have a PC and a gaming laptop, but this just feels like a much more convenient way for me to game. And 90% of the time I'm only playing indie games. And due to injuries, I can't sit at my desk for long hours because I get quite sore and uncomfortable. So I'm definitely more of a couch and bed gamer. This makes it the perfect companion for that. It's less bulk and I don't need something like a laptop table between the top of my thighs and the fire breathing laptop that I have. It gets really hot. I don't need a mouse. I don't need a keyboard. I can just pick this up and take it with me everywhere. And that again comes down to convenience. As we progress through the evolving world of gaming, handhelds are making their presence known again, which as a casual gamer, I absolutely love that. So some things I wanna mention with the MSI Claw, it worked for me straight out of the box. Once I charged it, I turned it on, I was greeted with the MSI logo and only a couple seconds later, I was straight to the Windows 11 setup screen. With that defective handheld that I had, it would turn on, already start to overheat, would take about 20 minutes of it showing me the brand's logo before it ever changed to the Windows setup page. So this has completely changed my perspective on handhelds and it's given me an experience that I expect as a consumer to turn it on, set it up and play. I also wanna mention that the MSI Claw has fantastic speakers. You really don't need the volume turned up all the way at all. In fact, even having it on 10, you hear things clear, crisp, it's just solid. When you're moving your character around in games, you feel the audio presence, it's there. If you're moving left, the audio goes to the left channel. If you're moving right, it goes to the right channel. It gives you an immersive experience without needing a headset. It honestly shocks me how good these speakers are. Okay, so what have I been playing and what's the battery life? These are some really important questions, so let's get into it. I mentioned that I'm mostly an indie gamer these days, so they are the games that I've been testing with the Claw. Specifically, Dave the Diver and Sunhaven. I did say that I only use Steam unless I'm playing something like Fortnite. That is basically the only launcher I use. 
So having access to the other game launches at the press of a button to me is kind of useless, but it's definitely convenient to others who would use other launches. I also played the demo of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, as well as Hi-Fi Rush with the Intel XE SS graphics turned on. So with battery life, I can get around two to two and a half hours of straight playtime, and that is in the MSI battery saver mode. It's definitely less than what I expected, and I'm not sure why it was so low, but it is just what it is. So let's start with Sunhaven. On April 7th, I turned it on. It was 1.57 p.m. and the battery was at 100%. This was the first time I was playing a game on it. I put it in the Windows battery saver mode and not the MSI battery saver mode. I stopped playing at 2.48 p.m. and the battery life was at 55%. And I turned the console off when I was done. So in almost an hour, it dropped to almost halfway. I played Sunhaven on the highest settings possible, which allowed me 1080p at 120 hertz. I was averaging around 60 to 70 frames with the occasional stuttering and lag, but it wasn't bad. I turned it on again at 7.05 p.m. and the battery was at 54%. I continued Sunhaven with no breaks and I stopped at 8.15 p.m. That is when it ran completely flat. So from that testing period, I got roughly two hours with the claw. This was the first time, like I said, that I was playing a game since I set it up. So could this be a case of the battery life not being used to me yet? I don't really think so because like it's not a mobile phone, it's not learning my patterns but I could be wrong. The next day I turned it on at 8.30 p.m. Battery was at 100% and I stopped playing at 10 p.m. This time I was playing Dave the Diver and when I stopped at 10 p.m. the battery life was at 36%. But I had such a solid playthrough with this session. Dave the Diver played so well. There was no issues with overheating or cooling. It stayed really, really cool while I played and like you could feel a little bit of heat like you would normally with any electronic but it wasn't overheating to the point where I couldn't touch it or hold it anymore. You could really feel the fans working to blow that air out. I had no noticeable frame drops at all and like the whole session was just really, really good. And this was being played in MSI's battery saver preset too, not Windows. So I can't speak to other handhelds out there, obviously I've said that, but battery life seems to be a little bit of a problem with Windows handhelds. And it seems to me that Windows is kind of the bottleneck. Too much power is being drawn in the background. And don't get me wrong, these processes, how high they are, it's incredible. It's great to have so much power. But I think for the kind of gamer that I am, I don't really need that high power in a handheld. I would much rather a lower spec with better battery life. The games I play really don't push the device to its extreme. I'd imagine playing AAA games like Elden Ring or Baldur's Gate 3 would give you a much different result and you'd need a little bit more power for that. But for my experience with what I tend to play, it's just, it's a little bit frustrating not having as long of a battery life as I thought I was going to get. Honestly, I kind of thought it'd be about three to four hours, maybe at a maximum, but it wasn't. Granted on normal days, I'm not gonna be sitting there playing for hours on end and I won't be playing from 100% to 0%, but you know, if I'm traveling or wanna take this with me, I would like a little bit longer of a battery life. So, you know, I'm not sitting in the airport with a dead handheld. I know we can't forget that this is a fully fledged PC in a handheld form factor. And that is an amazing point. The fact that you've got all that in this is awesome but I just don't think that for me and the kind of gamer that I am, it's not really needed, but I still see all the value in it being that way. So I personally feel that the Intel Core Ultra 7 processor is probably not needed for me. In fact, I probably only need the Ultra 5, but again, the Ultra processors are so new, they're new to me, they're new to a lot of people. So it would be interesting to see if there'd be a variance in battery life between the two models. But given the games that I did play, including Hi-Fi Rush with the Intel XE-SS graphics, it was honestly phenomenal. Looking at what I was playing and seeing how smoothly it ran, was just insane. I'm so glad that I finally got an experience to use a handheld that works for me and gave me a lot of fun. Also, I don't know why I haven't played Hi-Fi Rush sooner. That game is so much fun. It's so colorful, so vibrant. The way the art style is drawn is beautiful. And the fact that it is a rhythm game just like makes it even more fun. I recommend it. I wanna thank MSI for sending over the claw for me to check out. My time with it has been so much fun and I'm glad that I could bring my honest experience to my viewers. I'll leave some links below in the description of where you can purchase your own. If you are in Australia, you can pick these up from JB Hi-Fi. They are two different models with the Ultra 7 processor and the Ultra 5 processor. Thank you so much for watching and please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.